clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 139. House Resolution 139 by Representative Taylor of the 173rd Parish of the 158th, La Hood of the 175th, Newton 123rd, Corbett of the 174th, and others. A resolution recognizing February 11, 2019 as Community Health Centers Day and commending the Georgia Primary Care Association and for other purposes. Chair recognizes Chairman Darlene Taylor. Looks like she's joined by Representative Mark Newton for an invite resolution. Chairman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. Today we're celebrating Community Health Center Day. The mission of the Community Health Center system is to improve access to comprehensive primary health care services for the medically underserved Georgians. Community health centers are also known as federally qualified health centers because they receive grant dollars to assist in providing health care to the uninsured and underinsured. Community health centers in Georgia began their work over 50 years ago, partnering with communities to bring access to health care in areas that are medically underserved. Currently, there are 34 separate and distinct health centers organizations. All of them are nonprofit 501c3 governed by local boards of directors that are, are comprised of community leaders and patients. Collectively, these 34 organizations have over 225 clinic sites in 120 Georgia counties. Many of these clinics are in rural communities that where there is limited access to health care and high poverty rates. I will share that my community has two of these centers. We have expanded to include um, maternity care. We actually have a, a center in our school system. Over the past 17 years, Georgia has experienced tremendous growth of the health care center system more than doubling the number of clinics serving Georgia's underserved population and poor, uninsured, including Medicaid. In 2018, over 600,000 patients were served by Georgia's community health centers, and they are the highest large and safe uh, providers of primary care for these patients. From an economic standpoint, Georgia's community health care centers employ over 3,500 individuals with an estimated annual payroll of $137 million. Community health centers save the state's Medicaid program 33% in annual spending per Medicaid patient. I want you to know that the Medicaid dollars spent for patient care in community health centers helps the state to meet its budget challenges. Patients seen in community health centers result in savings through clinic, uh, chronic disease management and the reduction of unnecessary ER visits, thus affording relief for the overcrowded emergency rooms. As you can see by the maps that each of you have on your desk, every member's of constituents are served by community health centers. Again, the majority of health centers serve rural communities. We appreciate all you do for the people of Georgia, and today we have with us the community health centers from all over the state. Please join me in recognizing this important group, some of whom are on the, uh, in the gallery and on the floor. Thank you for what you do to help us meet the health care needs of Georgia citizens. Now I'd like to introduce Sarah Lang, President of the Association. Thank you, Representative Taylor and Speaker. And thank you, members of the House. Again, I'm Sarah Lang. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Valley Healthcare System in Columbus, Georgia, and the current chair of the Georgia Primary Care Association, the association that represents the 34 individual community-owned local organizations providing primary care. One of the major uh, focus that uh, the community health centers, as we look at the communities we serve, we have incorporated what is called an integrated service delivery model. Meaning, as we look at the communities we serve, we identify the needs in those areas. We provide 
primary care, medical care, OB, GYN services, dental care, pediatric services. We have our own, some of us have our own pharmacies, our own vision care. We've incorporated behavioral health care. And in my sight, we recognize that there's not always a, a provider of behavioral health available, so we've incorporated telepsychiatry within our services as well. We thank you for supporting us over these years, and we want to work with you as we identify the needs um, and provide access to care for those underserved, those that fall through the cracks as they seek health care for themselves and their families. Again, thank you so very much for inviting us today.